So this is the hypercycloid engine that we made in video 2327. And actually it's a special case of the hypercycloid that uses something called the Tussie couple. There's a hypercycloid, when it has two circles, one rolling over another circle, makes little lobes going around that depends on the diameter of the inner circle, or in this case the gear. The Tussie couple is when that diameter is exactly half of the diameter here. And when you do that, something really strange happens. As you rotate the circle around, actually the point on the circle draws a straight line. And because of that, of course, we can use that to either drive a piston or be driven by a piston, which is really quite exciting and really quite interesting, which is why I made that engine. But it was pointed out to me by a friend of mine called Edward Haas, and he runs a YouTube channel called Steamboat Ed. And what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to Ed's channel if you want to jump over and have a look at it. But he let me know that there's a way of changing this so that that stroke length will differ independent of the rotation. Now, I'm always interested in things like that because they can always be the basis, hopefully, of something like a CVT. So they always capture my interest. Now, he's done a couple and he sent me the video to have a look at and said, did I fancy having a go at it? And you can be <laughs> damn straight up to. I'm always really interested in things like that. So, I took the original hypercycloid engine and basically repeated it. So it, it's identical, it's exactly the same. All I actually did was reprint the back and the front. And instead of having such a big base, I made the base a little smaller. Of course, I reprinted the flywheel and the little cap and everything's the same. I reprinted the center as well that fits in there. The cap goes on the back of the center. Oops, if I grab hold of that. There we go, the cap goes on the back of the center. The drive gear goes in there like that. The flywheel goes on the back like that. So that whole section assembles in the same way that the original engine assembled. And then of course we have the gear. The gear has changed. Here, this bit is identical to this bit in here, so that hasn't changed, but it's got an outer ring on it now. So with that outer ring and the worm gear, I can put those in there and change where that outer ring is. And you notice on the outer ring, I've put some degree marks. There's 360 of them. It slots in the space here like that. There we go. And has a cap to go over the top of it so that it's held in place. The worm gear goes in the little slot at the bottom, and it, of course, has a driving axle. So, let me put all those bits together. So here it is, all put together. Now, there's a mark here. So there's a black mark going straight down to this ring, and on the ring, there's a dot there, a grey dot. The first thing we have to do is line up that grey dot with that mark, and we can do that by turning this little handle on the worm gear, that moves that inner ring until we get it lined up. Once it's lined up and we put this gear on, the drive pin also has to be in line with that mark. So the dot, the mark and the drive pin are all in line. Now when we made this one, we did exactly the same thing, but here the drive pin was lined up in that direction. And as the drive pins lined up in that direction, when we rotate this, the movement is that way to its full extent. Now we've lined it up in this way, when we rotate this, then the drive pin creates a linear movement straight up and down. And that's the property of the Tussie couple. The movement will be in line with that pin going all the way across the circle. If we change that effective lineup, so if we twiddle our handle here and move this gear, what it will do is change that position. So as we move that, we can see that this pin is now lined up in that direction, and so it would move all the way across there, right the way to 90 degrees. As we go further than 90 degrees, we just repeat that. So it's in the same quadrant that this happens. That there we go, put that back. This in itself is not much use, but if we constrain the movement, then something interesting happens. And we've got some parts here. These are a slides. There's a square slide that fits in there, and there's a hole that fits in there. That square slide fits on the pin. And there's a little cap to glue on there to hold it in place. 
Then we need to constrain this. Now I do have a little bit of 10 millimeter acrylic bar. Incidentally, of course, these files I will put on Thingiverse should anybody be interested. And included there is a rod of 10 millimeters to print if you want to print the rod and you don't have a bit of acrylic bar. It's just that the bar looks really cool. So if we feed the bar in here and then through that second slide, now we're constraining this in the XY. There we go. Now if I turn the input flywheel, of course, this pin is not constrained. This is a slide where it's free to move in a straight line up and down, and it will do exactly that. So there's no movement of this section here. However, we also know from the previous one that I did that if it's actually lined in here, then it's constrained because it's a big block, and that will make the whole thing move backwards and forwards. However, What's interesting is what happens in between. So let's move this to 30 degrees. Right, set at 30 degrees, of course, it's going to be partially constrained in one direction and partially constrained in the other. So when we move this, what we'll get is the resultant of those forces. If I turn that, then we get a partial movement of this, along with a partial movement of the slide, and it changes the stroke length from zero right the way up to whatever we're getting there. And if I change it to 90 degrees, of course, we get the full movement. And what we've got here is the essence of a CVT, from absolutely zero, no movement at all, to the movement we can get at the full range. So, an absolutely fascinating little mechanism that I have to thank Ed for pointing me to. I wanted to share the basic mechanism with you, because, of course, I want to do something else with this, and when we do something else with this, it will be another video. I've put these into Thingiverse, should anybody actually be interested, and please do jump over to Ed and show him some support. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and please do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already.